Firstly, I'm glad to see and note that this 10-point climb down has nothing to do with electoral cycles. I welcome the opportunity to address the House in response to this massive climb down that the government have announced by way of motion today. Former Minister O'Dowd was right, perfectly right and correct when he said the setting up of Irish water has been and continues to be an unmitigated disaster. It's a pity though it took him 11 months to come out and say this. Public confidence in Irish water and in this government I'm afraid and all to do with it is shot. Confidence, yes it has to be restored and a system has to be found that will deliver proper water infrastructure, proper water quality for the Irish people. The people are, as we already know, contributing towards this through their taxes. I want today's debate, and tomorrow indeed, and as long as it takes, to be constructive, unlike that of last year, when the government rammed through the Water Services Bill. I think it's incumbent on us to inform the House of the context in which today's announcement is made to look at the announcement and see what it does offer and what it doesn't offer, and to set out reasonable and constructive alternatives that could still be pursued. And given that the second stage of the Water Services Act was put through this very House on December the 19th last, in three and a quarter hours of debate, the much leaked and talked about clarity and certainty that the Taoiseach was fed up of answering over 50 times he said that this would be brought to bear today. I think, Taoiseach, before you leave, as I said earlier in relation to Fergus O'Dowd, it's been a long time coming. Back the pipe, and during that guillotine debate, it's worth remembering, there wasn't a peep from the government side about what charges would be. They, were in a coal <laughs> they refused to agree or accept that there needed to be an ability to pay clause in any such consideration. They refuse to agree or accept that the model that is Irish water would be too cumbersome and would end up costing the taxpayer more, particularly when local authorities would remain in charge under the service level agreements for the next two decades, servicing and repairing the country's infrastructure. And in that legislation, it should not be forgotten. It should never be forgotten that those who voted for it, including all members of Fine Gael and Labour, yeah. actually voted to cut the supply of water down to a trickle, not only to those that wouldn't pay and might never pay, but to those that couldn't pay and could possibly never pay. And thankfully that ludicrous decision has been overturned. In that debate and subsequently, the government failed to listen. They were going to appoint a regulator. That regulator would deal with the water charges issue. So they were initially confident that that problem about people's perception of what the charges were would be at arm's, arm's length from themselves once that water services bill was out of the way. And I wonder what the regulator thinks today of his role, considering what he was asked to do this time last year. Where does he stand now? What role has he? Is he not the one that's supposed to act in the interest of the public and in the best interest of the consumers? Allegedly. And once, once you proposed and once you carried through your threat, once you set up Irish water, as you know and as we all know, it has rarely been out of the headlines. We've had the recruitment of former CEOs from various counties across the country. And they also recruited retired staff that had received lump sums from the public sector and were then recruited at large salaries to Irish water. All of this happened even before the infamous bonus culture was reported on. All of this happens before it was let slip on a Sean O'Rourke programme that Irish water had spent 85 million on outside consultants before the 10th of January last year. And when the former minister Hogan was asked had he not cleared this expenditure, he said he should not be expected, nor did he, micromanage Irish water. However, 
the notes received since under FOI prove that he was actually made very well aware of the contents of what was proposed in relation to outside consultants, and he signed them off in 2012. So, Ciarán Corla, when we stand back from all of this, it's very clear, very clear indeed, that Minister Hogan and the whole of government treated this Oireachtas with disdain. And when you treat this Oireachtas with disdain, you treat the public with disdain. The government has created a situation whereby many would say our very democracy is under threat. Because, I would say, of their arrogant stupidity and determination to create a gold-plated bonus-driven super quango that is not accountable here to the Oireachtas. And we now do have a most regrettable and unfortunate scenario whereby Irish ministers are unable to go about their normal business on a day-to-day -day basis. And that is, of course, unacceptable. But you must admit, and you have to admit, that this could have been avoided if the government listened to what was said in this House 12 months ago and beyond. And former Minister O'Dowd did eventually shed some crocodile tears, but only after he was demoted as Minister with Responsibility in the Department of the Environment. And it was only then that he described, as I said earlier, Irish water and his unmitigated disaster. He had done this when the herd of horses had bolted. And more recently, having said that, the Taoiseach and the Taunish had disagreed with him. Well, they said, of course, it was only teething problems that was the problem, at the centre of Irish water being set up. Minister Noonan, he said in response to the opposition raising the issue of the fact that the budget hadn't adequately dealt with people's inability to pay the water charges as proposed then, as the opposition seemingly scratching, scratching looking for an issue. But they're scratching the last few hairs in their head trying to deal with it ever since. Another great understatement these were proven to be when the good Minister Kelly wheeled out the CEO of Irish Water for an apology en masse of sorts for everything that had gone before. I and others warned about not only duplication that was prevalent in Irish Water, but triplication and waste of taxpayers' money. As I said consistently, it was to no avail. The government was to plough on regardless, even when their own backbenchers' concerns began to emanate in recent months. The government has form, of course, in relation to this type of arrogance and defiance. We saw this in particular in relation to the medical cards and how they dealt with that issue. They denied there was any problem there also. And for 18 months, the government ignored and denied there was any call of these cards until they went before the people. And the people decided what you thought, what they thought about the call that had proceeded. The amount of U-turns that the government have announced since last December is at least 10. They've parted the waves and drawn the infamous line in the sand, they believe, for now. They've abandoned the need for PPS numbers. They've abandoned the need for meters, it appears. But they're introducing, you're introducing caps and allowances for the next four years. And as Buzz Lightyear, the Minister for Finance, said, and possibly beyond, infinity and beyond, it will turn out to be. And if that's the case, that won't conserve much water. That won't give any reasons. And that defies any reason why water charges are introduced in the first place if there's no conservation taking place. The other main reason, the other main reason it was said was to invest in water infrastructure, an area where the government has wrongly accused previous governments of neglecting investment in water infrastructure. Believe it or not, nothing could be from the truth. Five billion was invested between the years 2000 and 2011. Deputy McFadden, if you want to check the public record, you'll see that was the case indeed throughout the country. The government's determination to bring in Irish water has cost the taxpayer hundreds, hundreds of millions of euros. It has stalled any progress in infrastructure. 
And as others retorted while the Minister was speaking, 700 million was spent in the setup of Irish water and the procedure towards the installation of meters. Not one cent was invested in the ground or in any pipe. With the, youth, with the 10 new turns, the government have created what is now the most inefficient billing method known in the Western world. It involves the Department of Social Protection administering a bizarre 180 million cash rebate scheme. And the income from all this will be 90 million euro. So the government has spent nearly double that in consultants alone. Itself. And no wonder, no wonder the people are disillusioned and disgusted with the politics in this country. There's a fundamental lack of honesty from the government. And they've moved the deck chairs so many times. You've moved them so many times in this area that unfortunately people can't believe anything you say either in here or outside. In April, Minister, the Taoiseach said the maximum amount that families will pay in water taxes would be €240. Euro. This, of course, was before the local elections. And they had to dampen down expectations and add on that it would be all right in the night. However, the regulator, your friend, let you down again on the 30th of September when he confirmed it would be 500 or more. The Taoiseach did actually, yeah, for four four person households. You do the maths, check it out, look it up. No problem. Order, please. The Taoiseach told us also, if you don't mind, that he didn't agree with a bonus culture and that those days were gone. Within days of having said that, the CEO of Irish Water confirmed that all staff in Irish Water had a bonus incentive in their contracts. Taoiseach said that. The Taoiseach also said. The Taoiseach also said. Charges would be fair and children would be free. Neither of which would come to pass since these famous U turns. This is the same Taoiseach who wants Ireland to be known as the best little country in the world in which to do business. There's no business persons around the world might think, would think that investing 750 million in a white elephant to get a return of 90 million is good business. <laughs> There's no other functioning democracy that could actually believe the hames you've made of this. The government concentrated, you believe, on what the big picture was of investing in the infrastructure, while trying to deflect listening to the advice that you got from your own commission report from PwC. You deflected the information, you deflected the advice from the opposition, from your own backbenchers, but as I said earlier, more importantly, people. There's been no analysis of the so-called billions of euro that need to be spent in the system. That figure appears to have been plucked from the sky, to be quite honest. I heard the Taoiseach here two or three weeks ago say it was 20 billion was required. He said last week it was 10 billion. A government TD on the radio was back to 20 billion last night. And I don't think this debate should conclude until such time as somebody with eminent qualifications or independent authority can inform this House of exactly what has to be spent, when it has to be spent, how long it can take, and what system can be put in place. <laughs> and it's not good enough, to be quite frank, for this entity, this animal, this monster that is Irish water that still has the five year plan in place, that still is out there in a consultation phase in relation to a 25-year strategic plan. That's not good enough when the teaching of the country can be in here talking about 10 billion and 20 billion. And this debate, as I said, shouldn't conclude until that's out there on the table. And the record will show I and others have sought this since the first water services bill was brought before the House. We looked for an audit of the system, an audit of the networks for rectification and reinstatement works, where, it was, where, where what was to be done, how it was to be done, and how much it would cost. And we still haven't got it. That's not good business. That's not something you can run around the world saying we're the best small country in the world in which to do business when you can't put that to the table. And I put it to the House that this debate should not conclude until such time as that information is before the House. I want to ask the Minister about a first fixed policy. Will it cover lead, lead pipe? Where's he gone? Is he left? He's left. So you haven't guillotined the debate because you just don't want to take part in it. I said before I got into the the, the, the depth of my speech, 
that I wanted this debate to be different than what went before it. I want the people outside to recognise that the democratic process is better than what this government wants us to believe it is. There should be a collective effort on the part of every member of this House to resolve this issue and resolve it properly and effectively. And maybe then the democratic process could be recognised by the outside public as something that works. And for the Minister with responsibility in this area to walk out, having, us, having waited 11 months and three weeks and so long for everything to be put in front of us in such a way that we might begin to understand and question where is he to be seen? Not here. Please. Stop. 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 You don't know. What you think you should know? What you think you had prepared properly and adequately for this debate? You're briefing the media for the last week. I proposed last count corner. We walked out of this debate once before. Once before because of the way in which you treated this Oireachtas with disdain. You treated the public with disdain. Now, if you want to treat us with disdain again, you're treating the public with disdain. The Minister with Responsibility should represent the proposal and the motion that is before the House and listen to, listen to suggestions, listen to alternatives, listen to constructive opposition, and maybe then you might get it right and we'll have a proper vote. Order, order. Order, please. Order, please. Sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. 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 It's quite frankly unbelievable that the Minister has left the Chamber. We had this on budget day, the same principle. And a lot of people are talking about upholding parliamentary democracy, uh, underpinning it, and so on like that. What the Minister has done now, really, is contemptuous of the House and of the Doyle. And I would propose, uh, last count, Corla, yeah. I would put it to the government, and the, the whip in particular, to go and get the Minister and bring it back into the House. And pending that, I propose we adjourn the House. Uh, right. pending it. The standing order was that we adjourn at 10 p.m. tonight. I cannot adjourn the House until 10 p.m. tonight. No, okay. Sorry. No. Oh, sorry, please. Yeah. No. The house. I don't the house. The house. I I in order to protect the integrity of the House, the dignity of the House, because I don't think the opposition are going to put up with this. Just want to put people on notice. We're not going to put up with this. I think, uh, Count Corner, the least you should do, last Count Corner, is suspend it in order to protect the integrity and dignity of the House. Otherwise, I don't think we're going to hang around here too much longer and, and be insulted in the manner we've been insulted by the Minister. Well, sorry, I'm sorry, Deputy. No, so, sorry, please. No, there's, there's too many deputies. I know, in, in fairness, there are too many deputies on their feet. I just want to say, I was here in the House at 10.45 this morning. I just took over from the Cancora. The Government Chief Whip read out the order, and that's the order that was agreed. I'm oh, sorry, sorry. That's the order that was agreed. And I'm, uh, the order was that this, uh, this debate adjourns at 10 p.m. This was Government Whip read the order. I call the government whip. Concorda, this is grandstanding and play acting at its power. Uh, uh, Concorda, I agree to uh, suspend the house for 45 minutes uh, for the minister or minister of state will return. 45 minutes. The all is returned for 45 minutes. Now resume on the um, motion to water sector reforms and Deputy Barry Cowan is in possession. Uh, thank you, Les, for here. And I want to thank you for allowing the suspension of. Uh, the debate for 45 minutes to allow time for the Minister to uh, come back into the Chamber and participate in this debate and allow members the opportunity to respond to the motion that has been put before the House in a constructive fashion and in a fashion whereby many questions may be asked, maybe, maybe some clarifications sought, uh, propositions put, but ultimately uh, participation by the members of the House and ultimately when it comes to the time of a vote 
the people will make an informed decision whether to support or not uh, the motion that is before the House. And I welcome the Minister back for that purpose, and I hope that he will continue to partake in the debate from here on out. I want to specifically raise the issue about Irish Water no longer having to pay the 60 million promised in commercial rates to local authorities. It appears that this has been done in order to reduce Irish Water's expenditure to help this proposal to pass the Eurostat test. And is that test in March or is it not? During the course of your submission earlier, Minister Howland made comments to the effect that it has already been approved. Has it been approved by the appropriate authority or is it a phone call to Commissioner Hogan that he is depending on in order for that to have passed the test? Local authorities, many of them, have provided within their budget, which takes place this week, the income that was to be derived from Irish Water with those assets having been transferred to Irish Water. The networks, remember those? The 11 billion worth of assets. There was calculations made, as I said, by local authorities. Some have passed budgets. Some may have to reconvene their members to rectify a discrepancy that may exist. Or is it that the Department of the Environment will be asked to subvent local authorities by this amount? And if that is the case, what guarantees are in place that the local central government fund won't be reduced by 60 million and nobody any the wiser as to the fact whether the money was ever going to be made available to them or not? No. That needs to be clarified. That needs to be known. As I said to you, there are local authorities around the country deliberating over budgets, over tight budgets. And in the absence of even 200,000 euro, they may be in a position to have to suspend disability grants. They may be in a position not to be able to have house adoption grants, adaptation grants for the elderly, for example, at 15,000 a pop. And that would save the revenue, the cost of fair deal, which is up to 50,000 a year. Like my county in Offaly, for example, it has been told, applicants are being told to wait five years three to five years, because the funds are not there. And the funds not been there, it'll cost 15 million for those people to be housed in, in nursing homes under the Fair Deal scheme. And you can't provide one million to rectify that in a once-off payment to clear backlogs. But apart from that at all, when local authorities want to address those issues and want to make some effort to address those issues, you pull the rug from under them where they now don't have the commercial rate that they get from other utilities, I would, I would add, but not from Irish Water. You clarify that before the debate concludes. I have no problem with that being made available to the House, and we make a decision on what we vote thereafter. That's the process that you're engaged in. That's the process of putting a motion before this House, as the Taoiseach Wells know, well knows, and I'm glad to see him back to participate in it too, considering he was the very one over 50 times that told us we'd have clarity and certainty. Well, I want that clarity and certainty, as does everybody else here. And we expect to get it. And if the debate takes a week or a month, we'll wait for it. As I said to you earlier, I want to see before the House, Tisha, in case you didn't hear about it, I want to see a detailed analysis of what, what is required to be done and how it's to be done and the costs associated with it. Because you, Tisha, are on the record of saying it costs 20 billion one week and 10 billion the next week. So you've had 11 months now to figure out what it should be. So I expect you to clarify that before the debate concludes. I would appeal to the government to arrest their proposals in relation to Irish Water and the Water Services proposals that they've laid before the House before this and again today. And speaking of the Eurostat, I'm conscious of this on-balance sheet, off-balance sheet charade that we're listening to over the last number of weeks and months. The bottom line is the government have to guarantee it anyhow. And if the government have to guarantee it, the people have to guarantee it. That's the important point that shouldn't be lost on anyone. And I noticed on Monday evening on prime time, the sure-footed Minister Varadkar was put out to bat on behalf of the government, having had the leaks in the public media via the, the, over the weekend. And I found, to be quite honest, he was less than sure-footed. He was less than committed to the very fact that there'd be enough funding available under that model for the work to be done into the future that would rectify the system and leave it fit for purpose and allow people then 
to make a fair and equitable contribution. And that worries me, and it should worry you, because here's the one that's supposed to be straight. Here's the one that's supposed to tell it as it is. Here's the one that's held up as shooting from the hip. It was very subdued on Monday. Very flaky is the word for once you got it right. <laughs> count, last count, Corla, the duty, the duty, last count, Corla, the duty of opposition is to hold government to account and to offer constructive and competent alternatives. I and others have sought to hold this government to account in this area in the past, and as I said, it hasn't been allowed by virtue of the guillotine that was put before us. I have said consistently that I and our party have been opposed to the setting up of Irish water, to all that it stands for and all that it has sought to do and the fashion in which it has done it. That animal has turned into a monster. It has no faith, the public has no faith whatsoever in it. It has no traction. It's shot. It's dead. And the people do not want to see or hear of it again. And against that background, I think you should be considering abolishing Irish water. Good man, Barry, yes. Yes. Yeah. You, you continue to give the sort of commitment you gave in relation to board, Josh. Where is that? That's sorry, gone. sorry, we no more interruptions, please. Uh, speaker, give How the speaker respect. How much is the metering? 500 million. It's like the Olympics, you're going to take them up and down every four years, it seems, by the way in which you propose to deal with them. Count, through the chair, Deputy. Mm -hmm. This government... Quiet, quiet. Sorry, last point, Karen. Quiet, quiet. The government, Order. the government, but more particularly the members of the House, need to look at other state bodies in this jurisdiction who have been successful in delivering multi-annual programmes in the past, on budget and on time. We've seen different arms of the state, such as the NTMA, for example, mm. where its remit was broadened apart from its initial responsibility in relation to the national debt. We've seen its remit broadened to cater for pension reserve and the purchase of bonds, for example. The NRA was and is another success story. It built up capacity with a tight management plan and executed su successful implementation of multi-annual programmes across county boundaries. People have seen the likes of its ability to deliver. People have seen and can see on a regular basis the success story that it has been in providing an infrastructure throughout the country. Its remit, whether its remit or any similar body such as it, could be broadened. It could work within budget and deliver a programme on budget and on time. It's an existing successful model that's not bloated, that's not gold-plated, it's not bonus-driven, and it's certainly not the super quango that you have formed in the form of Irish water. It can be funded in many ways, on balance sheet, as was done for similar, for similar multi-annual programmes in the past, or whether by PPP, as was done also. It has delivered in the past also. Upon completion of any such programme, whether it would take three, five, seven or ten years, and we don't know how long it could take by virtue of the fact that, again, as I said earlier so many occasions, we don't know the exact extent of the spend that has to take place. And I acknowledge there has to be a spend, but I think you need to acknowledge there was a five billion spent between 2000 and 2011 that you failed to acknowledge, that you failed to honour the fact that that took place. And yes, there is a lot more to be spent. Of course there is. There is difficulties. There's leakages up to 40 per cent that needs to be brought to 20 per cent. The test on water quality needs to be put in place against any such investment in the system. I would be, have every confidence, every confidence in the consumers agreeing to a contribution thereafter towards the maintenance of an upgraded facility. That contribution would obviously be one that reflects the consumer's ability to pay and one which rewards conservation measures. You said earlier, and you've said since day one, 
that this was about conservation. You now have proposed a system that will be reviewed in four years' time. Do you remember, or are any of you aware, in your councillor's role during the course of the last four to six, eight years, if a development was carrying out, it was conditioned in many parts of the country that there be water meters in, put in place. When those who have been awarded a contract for installation in recent months have taken them up and said they're obsolete, what guarantee can you give us in four years' time to what's been put in place by these boys won't be obsolete then either? Have you any guarantee? No? You're well out to heckle earlier, and now we can't get a response to a simple question. But again, but again, but again, but again, I will allow, as is only right and proper, allow space and time to debate. I won't allow 11 months, which I've had already, but I think it was fair and reasonable to expect that such information would be available to this House in the coming days. Last count, Corda. Last count, Corda. This has been, as many deputies across the House have said, an unmitigated disaster, an unholy mess, an unholy mess. It's still there. It's still working on the you know, it's still there, despite promises to the contrary. And despite the fact that you think you have solved the crisis today, you have done nothing of the sort. And all I ask from you. On this occasion, in relation to what remains for this debate, as I said earlier and said a few times, engage in the process. Allow the process to be one of a constructive one, to one whereby the contributions of all members are taken into consideration. Allow those of all parties and none to make suggestions and to provide alternatives to this doll. As I said to you then, as I said to you then, if you were listening, you'd have heard them. Order, please. No, they were. They don't listen. They don't listen. They don't listen. They don't listen because they guillotined. They guillotined. They guillotined 11 months ago. They've guillotined legislation to the tune of 65% of what's been put before the House. They have the numbers. They put a process in place whereby the former Minister Hogan had a carrot, had an incentive. The carrot, the incentive was Brussels. He got it, he put it on the Taoiseach's desk, and off he went, and the mess that was left behind is for the rest of us to clean up. The suggestions were there on the public record. Do you want to go back over them and repeat them for you? Sorry, Deputy Count, to conclude. When you, Deputy Coffey, you have a responsibility. We last count corner. Order. Last count corner. We have a lecture now from people who have carried out ten U-turns since the first went before this house. Looking for suggestions. Looking for suggestions. Order. Ten U-turns. Ten U-turns. But members, please desist from interruption. Please, Deputy Count to conclude. Deputy Count has the floor. To conclude. Excuse me. Count Corley, I want to thank um, the House for the time, as I said earlier, to respond to this motion. Uh, this massive climb down that we've seen. The government feel they've gone far enough. That remains to be seen. There's much detail within it that will be questioned, as I said, and I would hope that all that information will be laid before the House and allow an informed decision, an informed decision, to be made by the members thereafter. And I would hope, I would hope, that all those deputies would not walk blindly again be, in order to be embedded to a Fine Gael policy derived and born in 2009 and adhered to by a Labour Party in the meantime and watered down to such an extent that they feel that they feel is palatable now but I'm afraid that's not the case and I can do nothing only object to the motion that's put before us. Thank you,